Welcome to this God-inspired message from Shofar Christian Church. Enjoy today's message. May you experience the presence of our Father and may you grow deeper in your relationship with Him. John's with us this morning and he's going to share the word. So thank you, John, and welcome. It's good having you here. Thank you. He's also just, let me just say this, also a good friend and a great golf buddy. So always good friends to have around. Thanks, Phil. Um, before we start, I don't know, Phil, could we maybe turn the fans off? I don't know if it's possible. I, I was getting a bit chilly and I saw a few people. They might, who can join me with that? Who's a little chilly? Okay, there we go. We're fine. <laughs> um, well, it's wonderful to be in this venue for some of you I've met before, and this is maybe the first time you see my face, but um, hopefully it's not the last. And if you're ever in Polokwane, please do visit us. We uh, love to have visitors, and um, a lot of you probably on your way t- through to Machubas Kloof or even the Kruger National Park, but uh, Polokwane is a wonderful place to be, so come and visit us. And then, um, it's uh, like I said, a privilege to be here in this venue. Aren't you guys grateful to, to have this space? Hey, um, I think sometimes you can take it for granted. Uh, I've knocked on so many schools when we go to establish churches and uh, try to plant churches, and the venues are sometimes the biggest struggle and challenge, and you guys have had your own set of struggles and challenges moving around Pretoria, but we are grateful to have you here, and um, you know, just how God is going to use this space to, to honor His name. Amen? Amen. It's a little bit chilly. Maybe uh, we should, uh, so this isn't like a youth group, so I can't get you guys to do like exercises. Maybe I can tell you enough jokes that you'll laugh and then you'll warm up and then you're like, um, no, I'm not going to do that. Because I really sense this morning that God wants us to honor his presence. And as we do that, um, he's going to even heat us up inside. <laughs> um, he can do that and uh, you're going to get excited about the things of God this morning. Um, well, this sounds very loud. I sound loud, but maybe that's just how it is. Um, I want to start this morning with uh, just maybe sharing a few stories. We, uh, have, we left Pretoria about it's almost just over six years ago now, and um, my wife and I, and then we went to go establish, like Phil said, the church in, in Zanin and Polokwani with an amazing team of people. And... Uh, there's a team here even, and I can see just how people are, are, are buying into the vision of what God is busy with here. And I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter how big a church gets, we can all bring our contribution, even if it's a small part, into what God is doing. And um, I've seen how it blesses th- those around you when you can just sow into that and be part of that. And um, I uh, also recognize that without God, it's impossible to see his church be built because he's the one that builds it. He's the one that establishes it. And even here, as you guys have moved into this space, we're going to trust for God to build his church, for God to establish new things even in this congregation. And I hope that's what you're praying for, that you're excited about that he wants to build his church and establish his kingdom even here and in your lives. This morning, I have a, a message that I want to share with us on the power of his presence. And um, I've just become so aware lately that without Him, I don't want to do anything. (laughs) Without Him, I don't want to do anything. Simon, it's so good to see you this morning. Um, Sorry, I haven't seen Simon for a long, long time. Um, But it's good to have him here. And uh, I don't want to do anything without His presence. And um, the same should be true for us in whatever we do. But I just want to share a little bit in Scripture with us and trust that God would unlock something or reveal or remind us of something in our journey as we we grow with Him. The first passage uh, I just want to read for us, and it really relates around us being carriers of His presence. And um, when we talk about this, I want you to picture yourself that when you go into a room, when you go into uh, your workspace, when you go even, you know, into a difficult situation, um, even into your, maybe spending time with your family, uh, friends, especially those that are not believers, these can be really challenging things to do, but I want you to be 
and have this picture in your mind of you carrying His presence. Carrying His presence. Closer. There we go. Sorry. Thank you. Carrying His presence um, with you. So as I share these scriptures, bear that in mind. So the first one is in Acts 1. Verses 8, it says, but you will receive power, and this is a passage we know quite well, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This word power, um, actually if you look at the original text, it means dunamos power. Uh, Maybe you've heard that before, but dunamos means dynamite. Okay, there's something around the power that God wants us to carry and, and host as we go into a space. Um, you will receive this power when the Holy Spirit is upon you. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to sharing the gospel or even loving people, it's very challenging and often feels sometimes um, almost fruitless if there isn't a power in it, if there isn't the, the leading of His Spirit to, to break open even the ch- people's minds and a way of thinking. And I've seen that without His power, it's, it's almost it's useless, all right? So we need this. We need His Holy Spirit to come onto us. This power that we are talking about is the same power and we, that raised Christ from the dead. The Holy Spirit and His power is the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. This is the power we're talking about, and it's the power that has even, uh, through His Spirit, has led us. I don't, I don't know about you or where your life was at before the Holy Spirit drew you to Christ and that you could meet Him and know Him. It's that same Spirit. That's the Spirit that we carry, this dunamis power. And it helps us be His witness. Go out. You know, if you bear witness of someone, it's like you've been with someone. You can't really tell someone about something else, but the, a first-hand account, a, a witnessing of who someone is. We need to spend time with Him. We need to honor His presence. In 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16, it says, Do you not know that yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? Another passage mentions that God's presence inhabits the praises of His people. This morning, I had a sense of His presence in this place. It says, His Spirit inhabits the praises of His people. We are carriers of His presence, God's temple. In Luke 11, verses 13, it says, If you then know... If you then, though, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you His Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Those who ask Him. I'm so reminded that whenever, now that I have children, I refer to, and I can understand a bit better of how when I give something to my child, I can know it's something that is, it's a good thing. But more so, our Father in heaven wants to give us, His Spirit, a good gift, something that is for us and for us to have and to, to, to treasure. I don't know if you've ever seen, if you give your child something that's really precious to them, and it can be something very simple. For me, uh, if I find a feather, a colorful feather, and I give it to my daughter, she treasures this thing. She'll put it in a safe place, and hopefully she doesn't forget where it is because she treasures that thing. But the look on her face, that daddy has given me this, he's given me this special thing. How do we treat the Holy Spirit? Are we thankful? Do we treasure Him? Do we have that same attitude of thankfulness and and treasuring Him? The Holy Spirit has come into you for you. When you get saved, you're born again, right? Your spirit is re reborn, God's Spirit does that work and it does it in you. He does it in you and He makes you come alive. We sing that song sometimes. He makes us come alive. Our spirit is now alive to God. But He gives you 
His Spirit comes into you for you. But His Spirit is on you for others. You get anointed and you carry His presence for others. There's an anointing that rests on us as believers for others. So God's Spirit comes into you to bring you alive, but His Spirit also rests upon you for others to encounter His power, for Him to be made manifest in your presence. And sometimes I think we can forget that. We can become undercover Christians. Is anyone that sometimes feel like an undercover Christian? There's a few, like, yeah. At times we, we, we carry us of something that's so precious that we can say, God, I want to carry your anointing. I want to carry the anointing of your spirit. And we see here just this passage in Isaiah, and it's echoed a bit later by Jesus. This is the first piece of scripture he actually reads once he is back in the temple. In Isaiah 61, verses 1, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Do you see there that it's on him? Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to, the, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and to release from darkness for the prisoners. In this passage, we see that if the spirit of the, the sovereign Lord is, is on Jesus, okay, that same spirit, it's not that any less of a spirit that we have access to. That the Holy Spirit can rest upon us and we can pray this. We can say, Lord, yes, would these things be true for me too? Would I be a carrier of your presence? Would I understand that there's a mission that you've called me to, to fulfill even this mandate of proclaiming your good news? And that's what's going to be shared next week at Encounter One. I want to encourage you to, I was praying here with Tia and then maybe you've done Encounter One ten times. Bring someone along. Make it your eleventh. Make it your 11th time to come or 20th time when we were part of the team here and, and just hosting and being part of Encounter One. Every time we left the space, we knew it was time well spent. Discussing the gospel, sharing the power of what God is doing and allowing people to come to know the truth through God's word and his spirit. I want to encourage you, let's, let, let's fill this hall again. Book out a Saturday. Say, I'm going to come again to Encounter One because I need a fresh encounter even of his, his presence, of His truth in my life. And bring someone along. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. There's such a broken world out there at this moment. There always was, but can I tell you what? I'm, as, as I look out into the world, it's just getting more and more broken. Amen? <laughs> so it needs more of us to be proclaiming the truth in boldness by the power of His Spirit to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness those that are imprisoned. And we have that mandate. I think sometimes as a church, we, 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 we lose sight of that. We think it's the responsibility of even the church. And I think, uh, uh, you know, as, as the church, we want to give you back <laughs> that responsibility. Say, okay, church, it's, it's yours. The Spirit is going to rest on you. You're going to be anointed to go and share into your workspaces, into the broken places, into your families. It's so important that when we come together, and even a lot of you would be in small groups, and if you're not, I want to encourage you, it's, it's a great place to grow. It's significant when we come together, and uh, I make a practice of this, that when we come together, whether it's a braai or kair or, I don't know, you guys, you, you kair, yeah, and, yeah, you do, man, I know you do. But you braai, you come together and you enjoy each other's presence. It's so important that we don't, we don't just do the things that the world does. Yeah, we're going to braai, we're going to, you know, enjoy each other's company. But the honored guest is Jesus and his presence. And we're going to host him. We're going to host his presence. Whether you put on worship music or you testify, I think sometimes we can so easily just carry on and do the worldly thing, but we're not creating space. And can I tell you something? 
that when we allow God into every part that we, of our lives, that where we engage with the brokenness of this world, we invite Him in. Things change. A testimony of a couple that was uh, in our church, or they were in our church and have moved now. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> but they came to the church and we had a bride and, and everyone was fellowshipping together and we were just enjoying each other's company. But no one was really drinking alcohol and no one was smoking, but this couple was. And they, afterwards, they realized, only afterwards, they realized no one else is drinking alcohol here or smoking. And they're having such a great time. Like, this is a bit weird. Why do, why do we need to do this stuff? Why, why do we have to be like how we are, where these people are so joyful? There's something special that's happening there. And it led them to the place where we could invite them to church because they realized that there's something different about the way we live our lives. But you have, to, you have to create that space. You have to demonstrate that. And in that, God can work. But it's just honoring Him. It's honoring His presence. It's honoring and recognizing that everything we do says something about who we are. Everything. The way you drive. The way you drive. I'm still working on that. But <laughs> everything demonstrates something about who we are. It's significant when we come together in our small groups and when we gather together that even though we're busy, we're tired, you've got kids, I'm like, I made it, I'm here, <laughs> bring the coffee. <laughs> we make it about Him. We make it about honoring His presence. We worship. We pray together. And if that's all we do, that we, we invite Him in, it changes everything. You leave that place lighter and more encouraged than ever before because when he comes in, he changes the atmosphere. He changes the environment of what we're about. We stop focusing on ourselves and recognize that it's about him. That's why we worship. My little daughter, um, he, she came in here this morning and she's so full of energy. She's so excited to be in church and see church and she came in this morning, and just, everyone was still praying, and she's like, wow, this is church. So it just looks different to, to our congregation. But she was so excited to see, like, this is what it looks like in here. And um, they have just grown to love worship. We've made a practice that in our household we will worship. So we put on worship, and at times I'm still working or doing something, and uh, my little, she's, you'll see her, she's four years old, Helen. Her, her name actually means um, shining light. And um, she comes in and she says, she pokes me, she says, Daddy, it's time to sing the songs. It's time to sing the songs. Because she's grown to treasure his presence. And we just make space for the Holy Spirit to be present in our home. And it's the most precious thing to see my little one's singing and dancing to God's great dance floor and raise a hallelujah and they all know all these songs and they are hungry to worship. Are we creating an environment in our homes that honors His presence? Whether you're driving or in your space and I can tell you something, it changes everything. It changes everything. We need to be good at demonstrating this in our homes. Let me read this here. 1 Thessalonians, verses 5 to, uh, 5, verses 16 to 22. It says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So that's for you. You belong to Christ Jesus. If you're sitting here today, I believe that God has done a work in your heart. He has embedded His Spirit into you and that you are a child, a son and a daughter of God, and you belong to Him. And then it goes on to say this in verse 19. Do not stifle, all right? Resist the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. And this, for us, is actually gives us almost like a benchmark or a, a pattern for practicing His presence. Okay, and I'm going to show us 
how this looks and how it's important for us to, to do this. We want to practice His presence. And what I've realized and come to, to understand is that God's Holy Spirit is holy. <laughs> so we need to recognize it as that and treat the Holy Spirit with honor. And when His presence comes in, when it, it administers to us and we can experience it, we need to be sensitive. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. I think at times we can so easily um, say, oh, it's just someone prophesying again, or it's, it's that person. We need to be careful. We need to test these things, it says. And, and then hold on to what is good. Hold on to what is good. God often brings and I believe he's going to bring prophetic word over this church because he's going to anoint you. But when we honor his presence, he's going to allow us to start to speak and declare the things of new life, of a new season even. And you must feel comfortable to do that. Honor him. Some, there's pr some prophetic people here in this space. And I want to encourage you. Continue to pray. Continue to prophesy over the church. Let us not cast those things aside. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Stay away from every kind of evil. I'll touch on that in a moment, but we need to learn to honor His presence. When you're an usher, who of your ushers at church? I know you sort of know where the doors are. And like, this isn't the bay. You know, and like, I always joke, because when I shared about this at our church, we've only got maybe five rows, so people can't really get lost. But an usher helps you find your chair. Eh? <laughs> so it's like, okay, there's space here. Um, no, we got more than five rows. <laughs> but anyway, an usher helps you find your seat, is it not? And I feel like God's inviting us to be ushers of His presence into what we do. But we need to know where that is. Do you hear me on this? We need to know where that is because people want to go to that space. There's a broken and lost world out there, but we need to be the ones that usher in His presence into our work environment, into a conversation. I love being able to pray in public when we eat a meal, when I, when I meet with someone. We, and in South Africa, it's so nice to see that people will take time. And it's not just a quick prayer. It's like, Lord, we want to honor you with this space. We want to honor you with our conversation and welcome you into this restaurant even. That you would, your presence would come and be with us. And it says in Scripture, where two or more are gathered, He's there in, in their midst. I don't know if you've sensed that before, but it can change the atmosphere of a whole room by just acknowledging Him, saying, Lord, we welcome you into this space. And I have this testimony. I, I was driving to, it's quite a while back now, but I was in Ireland, and uh, I got onto a bus with a, a group of, of people going to Dublin. And my family was with me. We were on holiday there. And um, I sat next to this one gentleman. And you know when you have those moments where you sit down and you realize, yeah, this is a divine appointment. <laughs> I'm going to be sharing with this individual. We had a two-hour bus drive to, to Dublin. And uh, my mom behind me, uh, she was just praying the whole time because she knew as well. You could just sense something's going to happen here. So that whole bus of about 22 people heard the gospel <laughs> because it was dead quiet as this young guy was asking me questions. And we were just sharing it, this, this divine encounter of the gospel and all the questions that people dealt with were being sort of exposed. And I was just so grateful that I could, you know, be used. My mom says afterwards, you know, I was praying the whole time and every time that one question would come up, I would just pray in the Spirit, and then you'd say the right thing. I was like, well, that's wonderful. But you know what? God's presence was on that bus. There was an encounter that was happening of His truth and His Word in that space where two or more are gathered, and you engage, and you trust in God, saying, Lord, we want you to impact these people's lives. We want them to know the truth. We want them to know your heart. But you have to be available. It's very easy in this day and age for us to just say, it's not me. It's not my calling. But can I tell you, that passage we read, that the spirit that rested on Jesus, that anointed him, 
is the same spirit that anoints us. And therefore, we carry that same mandate. Because that's what it's there for. It's not for us to feel the goosebumps, even though that's nice. It's there for us to carry the message of Jesus, to demonstrate, to, to live it out. We are ashes of His presence wherever we go. Our neighbor, our neighbor doesn't know Jesus yet. Um, they are not believers, and, uh, but our, our daughters are the same age, and they play together. Uh, it's amazing how God sets these things up. So they were playing uh, at our house, and they, we stay in a complex, and the mom came to pick up her daughter. But we had, it was a Saturday morning, and we'd started our singing songs already, you know, in the morning. So, but we'd left the music on, and I'd started working, and my wife was doing something in the garden, and, but the music was filling, the atmosphere was, was set. <laughs> we were just worshiping, and the house was open for the Lord to do what He wanted to do. This lady uh, came to look for her daughter, and she walked through our door, and she her eyes went like this big because <laughs> she actually came in and said, sorry, I don't want to interrupt anything. I said, no, you're not interrupting anything. Welcome. But she had just encountered his presence. I could see that everything in her mind was going, what is going on here? <laughs> I don't know what to think about this. And I could see that a seed was planted there of there's something more than just the world and this physical stuff. And God's presence was in that space, and she could encounter it by just walking into our home. And I know she's going to come to Christ, because the seeds are being sown. We didn't have to talk to her about it. It's just the space we create. My, my question for you is, what, what space are you creating? In your work, in your car? Now, listening to the radio is so depressing these days. I just don't. <laughs> I just worship. I'd rather fill, it, fill the atmosphere with His presence. And worship plays such important roles, not just singing songs. Can I tell you this? It's honoring Him in that space. Saying, Lord, I want you to be welcome in this place. Maybe it's being quiet. When we are ushers of His presence, um, we have to be sensitive. And I think one of the biggest things I've recognized in this last period of time, and I want to hold before you, is it says yeah, even in verse 22 that stay away from every kind of evil. There's a very good reason for that, because God is a holy God, and He cannot be where sin is. Therefore, we need to practice His presence by denying the things that are evil and saying, I don't want to be close to that. It changes the way we deal with sin and we look at it, because He's holy and we want to honor Him. So therefore, we need to say no to the flesh. We need to say no to certain things because it doesn't honor His presence. Maybe there's a series that you're watching and it doesn't honor His presence. It doesn't honor His name. And then we need to say no. We want to create a space where God is honored. And we need to practice that. Be sensitive. If you're married here and you've, you know, with your wife and husband, or even if you're single, it doesn't matter. But talk to those around you. Say, what, what, what do you do to to honor God in your space. And how do you deal with sin? And I think it's something God's challenging me with, and even our congregation, and I believe it's true for us as well here this morning, that God's going to maybe highlight something in the area, say, in, in your life, or in, in an area in your life, and say, this is not okay. You're not honoring me. And I, He wants to have all of it. He wants to have everything of your life. And Maybe there's an idol, something that actually just steals time, steals the glory of who God is in your life. Say, so, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for that. We, we, you know, we're going to take communion this morning, and maybe there's something the Holy Spirit is going to highlight and say, this thing or this way, it needs to change for me to come fully in. It might be even the way we talk about people. I was chatting to my wife the other day, and we often have to talk about people. <laughs> it sounds bad. We've chosen not to talk about them, but rather pray about them. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Yeah, that's a great, great point, John. <laughs> we should rather pray for people than talk about them. Because gossip, it's not of God. 
and talking behind someone's back. I'd rather talk as if they're there. But if they hear you praying for them, that's a different story. They're like, amen, I need that, brother. <laughs> help me, help you. <laughs> no, we, we, we need to grow to not be people that speak negatively of those around us. And let's, let's hold each other up in prayer. There's these moments, and I, I want to encourage you that there's these moments that matter in our lives. And it's often when the Holy Spirit does something significant. It's not just for the evangelist out there. just want to put that out there. We are all called to have moments that matter for God. And when we are open to that, open for God to use us, for us to be an usher and a carrier of His presence into a space, He changes everything. He can change everything in a moment. And I've seen this. I've seen a conversation change. I've seen a person change. I've seen even a business change when they honor God. Everything can change in a moment when we invite Him in and we honor Him for who He truly is. Unfortunately, at times, and I'm going to touch on this, but my, uh, my dad is an example of this, that he was part of a church here in Pretoria a while back now, but they would... Um, really, they had a powerful anointing of God's presence on the church, and he uh, got, uh, got offended by the way the people hosted or, 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 or honored the Holy Spirit. They made a mockery of it even at times. And I'm not saying, I'm not even going to highlight that it was the church's fault. It's how he dealt with it and how it affected him. And I think we need to be so careful also about how we honor God, when He does something through His presence, through His Spirit, that He gets all the glory, that we don't make light of it either because it's, it's His thing that He's doing. And then we, we actually say, God, more. Would you have your way? Would we not control it or restrict what you're doing? But when He moves, we can see Him have His way. I've seen God move mountains, and I think He moved mountains in my heart even for me to know Him more and to bring healing and restoration. There's some of these people, and you're probably thinking about them in your mind right now, where actually, I'm not sure if this person can get saved. <laughs> I'm not sure, God, if you can bring them to a place of knowing you. Think about that person for a moment, and think about the mountain that is in their belief or in their heart. Maybe they've gone through such brokenness that they just don't see a hope. But can I tell you what? When His presence, when God comes, that mountain can move. That mountain can move. And we can believe that and see it to be true. And sometimes we need to say, God, I'm, I can't do this anymore. But if you come in, you can. You can do anything. And we need to believe again in the power of Him moving into people's lives. Let us be moved by His Spirit. We're not driven by the world. Hello? We're not driven or led by the world. We're driven by, unled, not driven. We're led by God. And it's so important that we can recognize that, that you and I are led by the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit. We need to know that we're not driven to do anything, but we're led to do the things that He's called us to. God has granted us, I found this quote reading this, this article the other day, God has granted us the power, listen to this, God has granted us the power and authority to restrict or release what the Spirit does in the local church or in your life. He's given us the authority because He's God, but He's given us His Spirit to restrict or release. Let me explain this to a moment. God can do anything He wants to do, but He's chosen to use us. He's chosen to use you and me, and at times we can restrict that. I often see the Holy Spirit and how God uses the Holy Spirit as a gentleman. He doesn't force Himself upon anything. We invite Him in, and He can have His way. We need to recognize that we can restrict the flow of what God wants to do, but we can also release because it comes through us. Amen? Did you see that? Okay. Okay. The illustration of even the dove 
where the Spirit of the Lord, when Jesus got baptized, the Spirit came upon him and rested like a dove on Jesus. And from there, his ministry actually started. He was anointed. He was fully God and fully man, and he could do what he needed to do, but he showed us the pattern. He showed us the model that Jesus would be baptized and he would be anointed by the Spirit of God to go and do his ministry. That's where it started. And it's the same is true for you and I. The anointing comes upon us and we can go and do the things that he's called us to do. Like a dove. And I'm sure you've heard a message on this, but a dove, I don't know if you know, but doves fly away pretty easily. <laughs> They're pretty skittish things. And we need to create this uh, environment that hosts the Holy Spirit. We don't want to be doing things that chase the dove away. Not that it's a dove. Like a dove. Characteristics of a dove. It says gently and it rests. But we need to host him. And we need to let him use us. I want to mention quickly as I close just a few things and ways that we can quench the Holy Spirit. Structure and control. We can often want to control the things of God. and I think we've become even accustomed to maybe how we think God should work. And I think in this new, uh, even season, we're going to see God do remarkable things. But we need to be prepared. Let me just share this quick illustration. That same holiday that I went on in Ireland, we visited a church there. And um, when we got there, there were about eight people in, a, in this little stone, a bit smaller than this, stone church. And um, we went to visit them, and it was quite, uh, what's the word, dry. Not dry, it was just, it wasn't uh, full of life, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> and then we, um, we went to the service, and it was good, the word was preached, and we sang some hymns and songs, and as we left, my mom had this, uh, this picture that as we left, she sort of saw a prophetic picture of the Holy Spirit sitting at the door at the entrance of the church. And she said, we need to pray for this church because for whatever reason, the leadership of this church has decided not to have the Holy Spirit part of what is happening here. So we said, okay, let's pray. We prayed and we went on and carried on our trip and we never visited again. But a month later, our friends phoned us and said, you won't believe what's happening in our church. And we said, no, what's happening? <laughs> here's our hosts, <laughs> Frida, and here's my daughter, Helen. She probably wants to sing some more songs. <laughs> Can you come sit here? <laughs> This is, like, this is usual for my church, so <laughs> we have visitors to the front very often, um, whether it's my little ones. Um, I think the other day my wife is a doctor and she had to leave for emergency, so my little boy set the whole service at my feet as I was preaching, <laughs> um, but not today. I was telling you my story in Ireland, and they phoned us and said, listen, something's happened in our church. The church is full. And there just seems to be a life of something that's happening. I'm like, amen. That is amazing. A place that was dead is now alive because of God's Spirit. Because we invite Him in. We make space to honor Him. Something that seemed impossible. If you've met the Irish people, they like two things. <laughs> and you can guess what they are. And one of them is not church. <laughs> But these people were coming to church and they were encountering His presence because we'd made a way. We'd invited Him in. And something had probably changed in that leadership's heart that they need a change. They need to make way for the Holy Spirit. We need to usher in His presence. We need to be deliberate about it and not control. We sense there's such a control there that God would just open that. The same is true for your home, your life. This isn't just a church thing. At times, we can diminish his personality. We can see him only as an abstract power or a source of divine energy. Like, oh, there's the Holy Spirit there. He's, he's a person. We know him intimately. I believe you are sitting here today. If you know the Holy Spirit, you have a relationship with him. You can recognize his prompting, his leading. Don't diminish his personality. He's not just there 
for a show or to make you feel good. He's there to be known. Don't diminish his activity that alerts and awakens us to his glorious truth. He awakens us to the truth. Do you know what? We can receive nothing of his truth without his spirit breathing life on it. When we come into his house and into the space of God's word and reading it in our homes, we should pray, Holy Spirit, would you breathe life on us? Show us the truth. Bring revelation. Speak to us. I mentioned it earlier, but we shouldn't despise prophetic utterance. And if you have been offended by that or you, you've carried some form of offense against something that's even been said or pro prophesied over you, deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> deal with the offense in your heart. Even if it wasn't from a prophetic word, <laughs> there's freedom when you can deal with your offenses. And you'll know that because God, God will highlight it. You say, there's a blockage here <laughs> of the flow of what's happening in your life. Would you deal with that offense and unforgiveness and just re-invite me in? Because He wants to. Be there. Sometimes we suppress or legislate or give rules or instill fear in people's hearts about how they can respond to the Holy Spirit. Man, I, sometimes I'm a bit of a mess <laughs> when it comes to worshiping God in the Spirit. I snort and throw in but My church is like, I, I'm actually surprised. Where's the tissues here, guys? Because Sometimes I am such a wreck after worship because I just need to blow my nose. I'm like, I'm emotionally charged and created to connect with God. And it happens through worship at times. And I'm not ashamed of that. And neither should you be. If God stirs an emotion in you to respond to God, do so. Be free. There isn't a rule around that. <laughs> okay, don't box, don't box yourself even in and say, what are people going to think of me? Can I just tell you, if God's Spirit is working on you, you very quickly stop thinking about what people are going to think about you. You're going to look weird. Just make peace. I'm going to, be, I'm going to look weird. I'm going to be a bit of a, one of those weird guys because God's anointing is resting on me. People wanted to kill Jesus for how weird he was and the disciples because of the anointing and the things that they did and how they honored God without question. There's a boldness that comes where you stop caring about people and what they say or think. We're going to take communion now. Do we have it ready at the back? I really have such a sense. I want to sing a song, but I'm so, I'm, I don't have the best singing voice. And, but where's, do we have the band? Can they, can, they can sing a song. <laughs> um, I want to invite them up. As we were singing this morning, you know that I think the acoustics probably in this venue are amazing. And I actually wanted us just to sing without any instruments or anything boosted. But there's this cry in our heart that we would honor him, that we would exalt him. And when we did that and exalted him in this space, that he would come in and, and remind us of, of what we carry and that we can treasure his presence. And that where we go, wherever we go, people can encounter him and be encouraged by his work in our lives and change their lives. You can play something. We have a keyboard lady and I say, you can do the tinky tinky stuff now. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking we should play, play the organ this morning. That would be something, eh? I think one day you have to have a service, Philip, with the organ. It'll just be... <laughs> it'll shake the ground. <laughs> oh, thank you.
Does anyone have who still needs? I want to lead us in a prayer. But you guys look way too comfortable. <laughs> I think we need to stand up. Sorry, yeah. Hopefully you've still got your communion things. But I have this, uh, I call it my litmus test. You know a litmus test? In, like an illustration for it, uh, when you need to test if something's acidic or, or alkaline. I call this my litmus test for things of the Spirit. It's often when the Holy Spirit which dwells within us leads us and prompts us to do something. Our flesh says, I don't, I don't want to do that. And then I know it's my test. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to step out and I'm going to do that thing. And I believe there's some of us that God is prompting us at times through the Holy Spirit to do things. But we go, Mm-mm. the flesh says, I'm too comfortable for that right now. But God wants to use you as you usher His presence, as you walk in obedience. There's this glorious invitation to be part of changing people's lives. Not because you're so great. We're not. But He is. And His presence is with us. And therefore, He can change everything and anything. And that is a glorious thing to be part of as a church. For your home, for your children, for your future. To be known as someone that ushered His presence. That carried wherever you went, whatever you did. You made space for him to be there and to be welcomed. We know the truth. We are carriers of his truth. But at times we can so easily get distracted and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And I want to lead us in a prayer this morning. And then we're going to eat and drink just as you reflect and make, become aware of his presence. You know, you don't have to necessarily even come to church you are the church. You are carriers of His presence. You, wherever you go, make space for Him to be available. Whether it's spending time in the mornings reading the Word or praying, or whatever you're doing, invite Him to be part of that. I want us to close our eyes this morning. I want to just lead us in a prayer. And if you still have a free hand, would you just open it to him just in a sign of surrender I just want to lead us and I really believe God is just touching our hearts now and reminding us of the treasure and the presence that he has of his Holy Spirit and Lord we just come this morning and we want to repent We want to come with repentant hearts to where we have maybe withheld your spirit, withheld ushering your presence, withheld you in our lives. And we want to say we're sorry. We want to say we're sorry for that. Sorry for holding back something that is so precious that we treasure. And if we haven't treasured it, we're sorry for that. And we want to repent of that and say, would you come again afresh as we become aware of you in this space, that you are here, you are here. We become aware of you and would you refresh us? Would you pour your spirit again into our hearts with your love? As you say in your scripture, you would pour it into our hearts and we would become aware again. We want to be faithful stewards of your presence. We want to carry it wherever you would lead us to and be bold in sharing with others. Because as much as it is for us, it is also for others. And that you want to release it through our lives for us to see your power touch and change every situation. And that with you, God, all things are possible. So we just make ourselves available and open to that this morning. We invite you in again, afresh. And if there's something that's hindering that, would you deal with that in our hearts, Lord, right now? Expose it. 
uprooted, Lord, because you're worth it and you're worthy to be praised. And when you use us, Lord, we want to point people to Jesus. When you use our lives, when we honor you and glorify you. So we just surrender now to you. Just become still. We thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your body that was broken. But we're just going to create a space now, a moment for us to honor him. When you eat and drink, when you, when you feel ready to, just allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. Spirit, if you feel feel he should. Thank you. sense the peace of his presence even just returning to some of you you haven't felt it for a long time thank you Jesus thanks for listening to this message from Shofar Christian Church We believe that you enjoyed your time with us, establishing God's kingdom and His glory in your life. For more info, call us on 012-362-1363. Email us, pretoria at shofaronline.org. Browse our website, www.shofaronline.org. Or like us on facebook.com forward slash shofarpretoria.